Hey, welcome to this video. I appreciate you being with me. I'm Doug Berry. You know, in a recent interview that my friend Father Heilman and I did for the U.S. Grace Force podcast, link right up here and in the description below, with Father Chad Ripiker, an exorcist, we heard Father Ripiker say these words, Mary, the Blessed Mother, has perfect coercive power over the demons. Incredible. God gives this to Mary. Perfect coercive power over the demons. You got problems? Spiritual problems? We all do. Temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil? We all get them. Every day in one way, shape, or form. Sometimes they're really ramped up. Sometimes they're more intense. Right? We know this. Uh, a lot of this depends upon the life that we're living, the choices that we're making. But sometimes things are hitting us left and right. Turn to Mary. Turn to Mary constantly throughout the day. And there's so many powerful ways to do it. One of the most powerful ways that heaven has made perfectly clear to us is the rosary. To pray the rosary. To pray this rosary every day. Our Blessed Mother does not abandon us, especially when we turn to her through the rosary. Also, to consecrate ourselves to, the, to Jesus through Mary by uh, wearing the brown scapular, enrolling in the brown, in the brown scapular. Uh, miraculous medals. Uh, so many different ways. Devotions to Mary. So many different beautiful devotions. Having blessed statues of Our Lady you know, around us in our homes. Uh, does this... Does this act as good luck charm type of thing? No, not at all. They're outward expressions of an interior devotion to Jesus through our Blessed Mother. Think of Scripture. First recorded miracle of Jesus in Scripture is what? The wedding feast of Cana. What happens there? Mary initiates it. They're out of wine. She turns to her son. Son, they're out of wine. What does he say? Woman, it's not yet my time. We don't hear any other words from Our Lady. We don't hear any other words from Mary to Jesus even. What we see is is this turning to the servants and her words to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Same thing she says to us. Her role is to bring us to her son, to point to her son. Now, in all the Marian apparitions, and check the links below and the cards up here, you're going to see links to different Marian apparitions that I've talked about on different, uh, different videos in the past on my YouTube channel. We've addressed regularly how heaven has made perfectly clear to us the role of Mary in our lives. Because all of these apparitions, and I speak only of church-approved apparitions, all of these apparitions where Mary comes to the world, we have to remember she does not do this of her own power. She does this because her son is sending her. Sending her to say what? To say, pray the rosary, repent, make acts of reparation, fast, pray, turn your lives around, stop with the stuff that's sinful. All right? We have to turn away from the sin we have to turn to the virtue. Our Lady will intervene, intercede in our lives every moment of every day if we call upon her and give her permission to do so. But remember that part about permission I just mentioned. We have to cooperate with this. We have to cooperate with what she wants to do in our lives to bring us to her son. We have to cooperate with the grace of God working through Mary. She is the dispenser of all graces. Heaven has made this clear. Grace himself, incarnate, came to the world through her womb. The demons fear her. They despise her when she steps onto the scene in any spiritual battle. The demons know who she is. She is the woman from Genesis 3.15 that will crush the head of the serpent. She's the same woman in Revelation 12, the woman clothed with the sun and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She's the woman at the wedding feast of Cana. She's the woman from the cross when Jesus says, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. This woman, again, as, as Father Ripiker tells us, has perfect coercive power over the demons because our Lord gives this to her. St. Maximilian Kolbe says that there has never been an individual on earth or ever will be on earth, a human being, who has ever been given the power to crush the head of Satan except for our Blessed Mother. So I implore you, I, I, I cannot tell you enough. If I had one message to give you before I were to die, I would say this. Turn to the Immaculate Heart of Mary Turn to that beautiful, immaculate heart of Mary. Turn to her with love and devotion because she will protect, she will help guide, she will bring you to her son. For those out there struggling with Mary as, uh, as a point of faith, sometimes it's Catholics, non-Catholics struggle with Mary. She becomes kind of a stumbling block for many. Many reasons why that may be the case, but I can say, in my opinion, one major reason is because the demons do not want us to embrace her and accept her and really make a home for her in our hearts and in our lives. Right? They don't want this. Why? Because she crushes their head. She has perfect coercive power over the demons. Christ has given this to her. 
It is the power of God working through her. So please, I beg you, don't forget how powerful her role is in our life and in this world. Turn to her constantly. Check out these other videos of the other Marian apparitions where she constantly comes to the world warning us as a loving mother does, warning us of the times that we're in and the need for us to take the steps necessary to change our lives and get our act together. And remember, she says, the number one weapon, spiritual devotional weapon, is the rosary. Make that rosary part of your everyday life. Make an extension of who you are. The day's gonna come when we're gonna die. For those of us who are Catholic, we know when it comes to a Catholic funeral, uh, most of the time the body is laid out there in the casket for the viewing if we're fortunate enough and blessed enough to be able to have a, a viewing of the body and our loved ones come up and what do we see a lot of times we see that rosary is wrapped around the hands of the individual as we're, as we're lying there in that casket you know what I never wanted I never wanted my kids to come up and you know, God willing it would go this way and see their father lying there and they would see this rosary wrapped around his hands and they would look down and they would say there's my dad look at him there What's that? What's that thing wrapped around his hands? He never, he never did, he never, he never prayed. What, what is this? Never wanted that. What I want is my kids to see, again, God willing, the day comes where they're able to view my body lying in a casket. I want them to see that rosary and say, that's what my dad was about. He was about turning to Jesus through Mary. He was about making sure that that rosary was an extension of his life. It is a devotion to Jesus through Mary, to know the Holy Family, to love our Blessed Mother, to love Saint Joseph. Make that rosary an extension of who you are. It'll help, it'll help the legacy of those who follow you to know that going to Mary is critical and essential in the spiritual fight. She has, thanks be to God, perfect course of power over the demons. Call on that. Call on that power of Our Lady. And then cooperate. Cooperate with the grace of God. That's all I got for now. Share this video. Thanks to all my patrons, those who have supported me and continue to support me with this work. If you are interested in becoming a patron, check the link below. But for all of you who do support and all the great supporters we've had over the years with this ministry, I pray for you by name. I mean that. God bless you. Be battle ready. We'll see you again soon.